We're gonna be replacing the radiator today in this uh, Dodge Ram 2500. It's an 08, 67 Cummins. Yeah, you can hear the aerial sprayer going by. This is all I'm gonna to need today. Using a flathead. That'll kind of help pry a little bit of things without really doing too much to break it. Use a pair of water pump pliers. My uh, half inch electric DeWalt impact, a 13, a 12, uh, and back sockets, 13 millimeter, 7 16 and 10 millimeter ratchet wrenches. I'm using my quarter inch socket and ratchet with a 10 millimeter on it, little extension, and my little half inch extension for the uh, impact. Make sure you guys, uh, before you pull it all apart, drain your radiator. I did that in a five gallon bucket, excuse the mess from the shop, but I haven't had time to clean it. I only had four gallons, you should have about six Try not to make a mess like I did. All right, let's All get right, started. today I'm hopefully pulling out this uh, radiator here out of my 2008 Dodge Ram 2500 with a 6.7 Cummins in it. And after looking at everything, it doesn't look like it can just uh, undo the fan shroud and pull it straight up. You gotta take all this junk off on the front first, all your other coolers. So first off, you know, four bolts, one on each, uh, two on each side, let her drop, she'll hang there. Then you undo your stuff for your intercooler and undo these. Well, I'll be back once I get everything kind of pulled. Also, you're going to want to remove this cross member, and then, which is, there's four 13s. There should be a 10 like right in here on each side. I'll do that, get this out of your way. It'll help you undo everything from the radiator. It should help make That's it easier. Respect. It might be easier to take this cross member off first because then you get to that bolt right there. A heck of a lot of easier. Zip ties off and kind of get all this stuff moved out of my way. That way I can get this removed easier. I don't know, I might just hang off the front of this too. Yeah, that might work. That might work real well actually. So when I'm back, um, should be like a power steering cooler down there somewhere that I'll have to undo as well. Unbolt that from the radiator. Get all this out of the way, and uh, I, I do have this unbolted already, or got the nuts off of the fan shroud, as you can see. Hopefully, I'll be able to kind of pull this forward and pull up on the fan shroud and release that from the radiator so I don't got to take my fan off. I really want to try to avoid doing that. That doesn't seem like a lot of fun, not, a, not much space back there. All right, I'll be back. Next thing I'll do is power steering cooler here. <laughs> There's a bolt here and there's a bolt on the opposite side that I undo. And this will just hang down. And my puppers wants to say hello. Hello, puppers. But yeah, we got that going and she should be about ready to just pull out. And then this plastic piece, you know, we'll pull out at the same time. So be about ready. And there we go. She's gonna hang just like that. Now, I gotta have the fun. Yeah. Uh, I'm doing my radiator hose. There's one right there and there's one up top. You'll squeeze the clip together, pull it back, and then rotate the hose until it breaks free and then pull it off. Otherwise, you have a risk of damaging your hose. Same with the top one. Then we pull these back, we'll just kind of shove them out of the way somewhere. And uh, hopefully not dump too much on us. Yeah, here we go. Now here's what I'm talking about. Once you get that clip moved out of the way, go and grab just a little bit of pressure and then go until it starts rotating. Now we should be able to just kind of pull her on off. There she is. Just got to shove it out of the way just like that. All right, here we go. So I think this, this was a bit of a pain in the butt to get moved off, but you know, whatever. Go ahead, you know, full open with mine anyway. Grab the bottom. Okay, squeeze a little bit, rotate it, make sure it's broke loose. Then I'm going to move out of the way slightly. Get my five gallon bucket over here. Just in case she dribbles. All right, here we go. Five gallon buckets in place. Hose loose. I shouldn't really have anything coming out of this hose. 
I drained it and let it drain overnight. Really? Still had some come out. Oh well. All right, kind of shove her out of the way there. There she goes. So I should basically be ready to just yank this puppy out. That'd be a little difficult because I didn't take everything off because of my big front bumper. Let's see here. Those two lines right there. I do believe it's those two. Let's see here. I can see it right there. Oh. Yeah, there's two lines up there. The black ones. Well, that went blurry. Focus, there we go. Those two right in the middle. Those two might get in the way a little bit, but oh well. See if I can't set this camera up to see me pulling it up. All right, be right now. I tried pulling this sucker out just a little bit ago. To no avail, only to figure out that the boot slash piping that comes off of the uh, intake here comes right to there was blocking my way from pulling the sucker out i went ahead and pulled off the two clamps for that set them up there oh by the way my intercooler's out i took that out um which is just the you know the clamp the piping and hose there when you take the clamps off you take them off like i did and if it's got a spring don't lose a spring and uh, hopefully we should be able to pull it out now. Hopefully. Let's see here. Set this up. So you can see me, my lovely face, attempt at pulling this sucker out. Okay. There we go there. That made it so much easier. Now there's a cross member on the front here that's being a pain in the butt. Boom, got that one. I don't know why it's not coming up. Oh, just barely catching. There we go. Well, there goes a boot or something of that nature. What's stopping me? Not sure what that is, but I'm gonna let it drop to the ground. I'll find it later. There it is. Great. Now I'm gonna hop down so I don't kill myself popping this thing out. And I'm standing on the tow hooks from my bumper here. There she is. All right. Let that sucker out of there. Oh yeah. I'm excited. Let's see what she looks like. Oh my, that's a big Cummins fan right there. So it's stopping me. I actually had another video, but it was a big failure. But I was first trying to pull this whole setup out. It was about, I don't know, six, seven minutes long. This is in my way. And these were on my way as well. But I got it yanked out of there. All right. Now we got it all out, guys. Make sure to inspect everything. Make sure it's all good to go. And uh, I'm going to pull these off here. One on each side, it's this plastic chunk right here for the fan housing. And hopefully maybe I'll see where it was leaking, I don't know, maybe. And then I'll put that all on the new radiator and start putting her back in. Basically once you get it all apart, just put it in the way you took it out. Bolt everything back up, fill her up with almost six gallons of uh, fluid. I'm gonna use some Dex Cool. Probably throw a garden hose in there, flush the system out, you never know, I'll do it the old way. Old ways never failed in the past. Also, right now, if you haven't done it recently like I have, change your serpentine belt. Trust me, it's a pain in the butt. With all this in, you can do it. It's going to take you a while and so you'll need some pry bars, but you can do it. It just sucks. But yeah, also, I took all the nuts off of this shroud so it can move around with me. 
So, I mean, if I want to, I can just boop, they take it right out and really inspect it. This would be a great time to change a serpentine belt. Look at all that room you have there now. Woohoo! All right. I'm going to go put this back in. And uh, I right. thought Summer. of something else I should mention. Anywhere you find these little clips on the old radiator, pull them off, put them on the new one. The new ones don't have it. Also, on each side of the radiator, you have these little rubber deals. They help with the vibration. Take them off, put them on the new one. All right, another thing you could do to help yourself out, if you want to make sure you avoid damaging the fins here, take the box the new radiator came in and cut out the sides and tape them onto the front and back of your radiator while you're putting it in to help you avoid damaging your fins. All right. Now, yeah, like I was saying just a little bit ago, you took it apart, you should be able to figure out how to put it back together. If you have issues putting it back together, go back through the video, kind of look through kind of the step you're on-ish. You should be able to figure that out. All right. I was done with the videos. And I was going to, you know, I can figure it out yourselves, blah, blah, blah. Little tip, put these back when you put them back on your hose clamps. Right there, right there, and right there. Put them back to where if you have a little electric impact, you can get to them with a little electric impact. That way, in case in the future you need to take them off, you can do it much easier. All right, all right. Got her all back together. One thing I'm gonna have to do is I've got all these extra wires here and crap. Well, that's uh, these LED fog lights I got on here, which really help at night, by the way, or when you're on gra gravel roads. Then I'm gonna have to secure all these extra wires. So make sure you guys go through and do that. Make sure you got your clamps on. Make sure all those clamps are on. And also, Make sure that new peckhawk is closed before you ever start pouring any kind of cooling in there. Do that. Otherwise, you're gonna hate yourself in the long run. All right, always double check everything. Make sure it's all good to go. G to G. Golf, tango, golf. Which I am right now, besides zip tying all the wires, of course. But hey, that's whatever. So. There we go. Um, once you, I'm gonna fill this guy up as much as it'll go. I'll pour a bunch in the reservoir. Then before I ever start it, you take your hex wrench, otherwise known as an Allen wrench, unscrew that to see coolant coming out. It's always good, you always unscrew that before you see coolant come out, otherwise you're gonna have a big old air bubble in there. You're gonna overheat your engine. Nothing you could do, which I think I'm going to do before I do that is, well, apparently that's broke. So I might have to, well, there's my little tab there. I'm gonna have to take that off and weld it. But see that right there? I noticed it while I was working on this. Apparently I'm leaking right there. So I'm gonna end up taking the blue hose off here Probably uh, putting some of that thread tape on there and hopefully seal that up. Hopefully. If all else fails, I'll pull it back off eventually and just do anaerobic sealing on the threads. Never get it off again, but it'll never leak again. I don't know. I haven't decided yet. But yeah, there we go. All back together. Looking nice and pretty. I do have a mess on the floor I got to clean up. Oh, well. That's all part of the game. All back on. Also, make sure that your uh, fan clutch wiring is out of the way of the fan. Make sure it didn't come out. There's like a little L bracket down there that holds it all in. Make sure that didn't come out. Otherwise, you're gonna hate yourself again when that uh, catches in your fan, destroys your fan, just pulls out all that wiring. Possibly destroy your engine harness. Yeah, all right. Have fun, y'all. And uh, enjoying doing this uh, repair. I can't really see where it was leaking out of on this. But when it was leaking, it was all running down this, running past the peckock, it was running out the side there. So I'm not sure where it was leaking, but it was leaking, needed replaced. I was down to over two gallons of uh, coolant. So uh, yeah, all right, have fun, good luck. Take pictures if you need to, so you know where stuff goes. Mark your bolts, do whatever you gotta do. Have fun with it, all right, catch you later.